Thanks for staying with us. Now, are you suffering from fatigue? Do you look a little paler than usual? Do you suffer from shortness of breath? Yes, all of this may just point to the fact that you may be in need of a holiday, don't we all at this time of year? But you could also have an iron deficiency. And you're not alone. Iron deficiency apparently affects over 2 billion people worldwide. It's when the body holds on to too little iron, either from blood loss or poor eating habits. Studies also show that in the Western Cape alone, 57% of women are deficient. I know I am. Many of them, adolescents and young adults. Now, don't trust me for my word. Our resident GP, Donny Fick, is in studio to tell us a little bit more about what we should be looking out for. Donny, thank you so much for joining us Good this morning. Good morning, Marcel. Fresh, How are you doing? Fresh and ready to face the, the Sunday and what it has to offer. At least I know I'm not iron deficient, right? I still have the energy to bring this talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but now this is the thing. In reading up about our subject matter today, um, all of the things that point to a potential iron deficiency for me just sounds like some of the negative impact that our daily modern lives have on us. What do you look out for when somebody comes to you with potential iron deficiency? And, and I think there's a, there's, there's a whole wave of this as well. And I don't know, in Johannesburg particularly, where patients are like, I'm tired, I have hair loss, I have fatigue. And then they go and just dose themselves with a lot of multivitamins. Drip bars have become very fashionable. Very popular. So people are diagnosing themselves and medicating themselves and saying, look, I've got fatigue, I've got hair loss, mouth ulcers, brittle nails. Mm. Let me just go get a quick fix. And the difficulty with that is we might be missing an iron deficiency. And as you said earlier, mm. the stats point to, what, 57% of women having iron deficiency. The next big population group are children under five with iron deficiency. So, so, so let's break it down. Let's look at the people that are, are, are at potential risk more likely because of what research shows us, because of their DNA, uh, because of where they come from. Talk to us about the people who are at most risk and what the science tells us about why they're at most risk. I think we should also just look at, yeah, we, we, as GPs or doctors, always want to understand why. We get a, a blood result, we see the iron is low, we want to see, are they losing iron? Say they have heavy menstrual periods. Mm -hmm. Women of reproductive age fall into that category, so we want to look at that. We want to look at dietary intake. Are they having enough dietary iron? Is there malabsorption? Is the losses due to something more serious and sinister, like chronic medical illnesses, renal failure, sure. cancers can even... That could be the first sign that maybe there's a, a malignancy somewhere mm. that you might be anemic. So those are all the things that we want to... We want to look at also is there an increased demand pregnant women and we go back to the reproductive age as well so these are all the, the the population groups we look at they are obviously at higher risk and those are the ones we want to investigate and put them on appropriate treatment and i think appropriate treatment is the key phrase as alluded to earlier lots of people medicate themselves mm. and do all sorts of lotions and potions but we don't get to the crux of mm. the crux of the matter and why do children fall within a grouping that is at risk i think south africa particularly has lots of malnutrition issues and I think mm. that could be from a dietary dietary point of view that is addressed on a much bigger social level than mm. we can but obviously there are I think the government does look after children like primary health care clinics and mm. there is I remember when I worked there many years ago there's definitely iron supplements to give to kids now well. now, now uh, parents might be watching this right now caregivers might be watching this right now and they might be looking after a child who's five or under what the, should they be ensuring that their child is eating enough of to ensure that they do not end up with an iron deficiency? So there's, there's two different types of iron groups. There's heme iron and non-heme -heme iron. And I think a lot of heme iron comes from meat-related products, which I think in South Africa is difficult to access. Mm. I don't know. We have a lot of people that live below that line where they can eat Afford the, the, the greeny leaves exactly. and, and, and that kind of thing. So those are the things leafy you need to... Leafy greens, rather. Yeah, <laughs> the, the green leafy vegetables are what you're looking at. So... Yes, there's the desired things that children should be eating. There's the desired stipulated guidelines of what children be eating. So I what think, are they? So leafy greens exactly. like spinach, I know, are high in iron. Well, is we, it legumes? Is it seeds? What is yes, it? Yes, legumes, seeds, green leafy vegetables. And then obviously, if you are fortunate enough, then red meat based heme iron products and and oily fish and yes. and with uh, high in in omega then talk to us then if we, if nutrition is so important in ensuring that you don't suffer from an iron deficiency should our vegan and vegetarian south africans oh, be especially careful 100 percent. and obviously those are the people we'd like to investigate those mm. are the people we'd like to do blood tests on just so we can see what the iron levels are like especially if they're presenting with the symptoms we mm -hmm. mentioned earlier fatigue i mean it is a very vague symptom but if you're vegan and if you're fatigued and have low energy, whether that's mental or physical, that's something we need to 
we need to look into. Now, uh, we like to talk about what you face as a GP on your day-to-day -day here in Johannesburg. And like we said, uh, in Johannesburg, we do generally live a very high-paced life. Stress is a massive issue. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes I think something that we don't even take note of because we just keep going and like you said we just quick fix <laughs> quick fix um let's go get a b12 i mean i've had that conversation on my stoop and somebody said i'm just going to get a b12 yeah. it's that time of year i just need to get to august i'm just going to get a b12 shot um and that kind of thing now we're not here to say that none of those things work but we should be looking at a more holistic approach 100%. to ensuring that that all of our levels are where they should be i remember when i was more involved in like the academic side of medicine one of my mentors said to me we as doctors are too ready to provide patients with quick fixes as well. So we're like, mm. oh, we don't want to investigate you for an iron deficiency, bloods take a while, you need to come back for the results tomorrow. But it's so important to do that because we could be missing something big if we're not. We just, yeah, have a quick B12. It will boost your energy level for a day or two, but we're not fixing the anemia. And as I said, it's important to get the, the diagnostics right so we can get the treatment right because not all treatments are created equally. The B12s might not work for a patient that's anemic because we got the diagnosis wrong and not all iron supplements are the same. Lots of patients go and get the over-the-counter iron supplements and then complain of side effects and then they're like, no, we're never going to use that again. But there's the iron polymaltoses, there's the iron, for, like the first sulfate irons and the polymaltoses are more easily okay, tolerated. Now talk, to, now, now talk to me, you've you lots of, used a lot of big words there for a second. <laughs> Sorry, so I, got, I got away with myself. <laughs> so talk to me about now, somebody's come to you, you've done, done the blood test and you realize yes. that her, I'm going to say her because most, I mean, I know I've got, I had a, an iron deficiency, it's still something I need to keep an eye on, but I, real, I learned then that it's not something that can be fixed overnight. No. It needs to be brought up over a period of time and that's the thing that's quite difficult about yeah. it. So what are some of the approaches you can take once somebody has now um, had the the test and it shows that they are iron deficient. So there's the oral agents that we spoke about a little bit earlier. So this is a pull that you can take every day like every a vitamin day. And over exactly. a period of time. And we tell patients to then take it for three months. It's not a quick fix, right? Like mm. this takes about three months to get to a level where you'll feel better and your iron stores are, are on the level that we like. But if it's really severe, they have drip forms. Like okay. you can get an intravenous iron drip. It looks like Coca-Cola. Like I was walking around the practice. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking around the practice the other day and I'm in a group practice with seven other doctors and I walked to our nursing station and there in each three cubicle was a lady attached to what we call a Coca-Cola iron drip, which just made me realize there is a problem here. Like obviously we're dealing with a lot of anemia. Yeah. But yeah, those Coca-Cola drips are if they severe and then we can. And like we say at the end of all of our conversations, you're watching right now, you think you might tick some of the boxes we spoke about. Yeah. What should you do? I say this every week, right? I feel like I'm repeating we'll myself. We'll keep saying Go and see your doctor and get bloods and get the appropriate diagnosis so you can get the appropriate treatment. And ensure that you're eating lots of leafy greens with all of your meals. I say with like a with, real mom, right? Yeah, and she eats more leafy <laughs> greens than we do, so we need to take care of ourselves as much as we take care of the little people in our lives. Um, Donny Fick, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much Have for a great um, uh, uh, coming to tell us to pay more attention to ourselves and to take better care. We really appreciate your time every second Sunday. So Donny Fick will be back in about two weeks' time, and then we'll bring you some better ways to take care of yourself.